don't let the cute exterior fool you. There's more to Sparks of Hope's combat system than you might think. The battles do start getting pretty tricky later on, and these will be almost required if you're playing on average or especially the demanding difficulty. I have 15 of these gameplay tips to shovel into your skull cavities, so let's get to it. And if you happen to be new here, hit subscribe. Number one, any of the active abilities that only trigger on enemy movement like Mario's Hero Sight, Luigi's Steely Stare, or Edge's Stormblade can be triggered while your turn is still active. Just dash attack through an enemy that is in the area of effect of one of those skills, and that will pop the target up over cover, and those movement-based attacks will be triggered from your nearby teammates. You can also trigger abilities like this by the same character who cast it, by dash attacking with them after activating their ability. Number 2. As long as an enemy isn't resistant to an elemental type, its bonus effects will be applied. Here, hitting with gust damage will send them pinballing around through the air. And if you happen to get lucky and knock someone off of the map, no lack of two for them. They take full effects of out-of-bounds damage. Number three, there usually is no way to attack nothing. You might actually want to be able to attack without an enemy in range in certain situations, though. So, if you throw out a POW block item, you can target that in mid-air just like an enemy, before it detonates, of course. Doing that extended the attack range of Rabid Luigi's primary weapon that normally wouldn't be able to reach those Goombas that thought they were perfectly safe. Number 4. One of my personal favorite sparks is the Glitter Spark. Ooh. Which you can acquire about halfway through the game. This increases the character's overall weapon attack damage, but also gives them the Gather Round ability. This will draw any nearby enemies all towards one location, which can set you up for some easily dispatchable clumps of enemies. Using Gather Round will also trigger movement-based abilities, making this another great way to get in some extra shots with your overwatching teammates. Number 5. Using a Shock Spark effect can extend the time an enemy stays launched in the air, useful for mid-air shots, and also bounces the electricity to nearby enemies. Number 6. Those active abilities I mentioned before that only trigger on enemy movement will also take on the effects applied by elemental sparks if you activate those first. Depending on how you upgrade your skill trees, some characters can shoot with an elemental effect two, three, or four times all in one turn. This lets you get even more use out of those elemental sparks before you send them into cooldown. Number 7. The burn effect will cause enemies to catch on fire horrifically shrieking and melting away with scalding hot DPS. Whoa. Also, if they come in contact with other enemies or yourself, the effect will spread. Number 8. After you beat the second planet, I recommend heading back to the first one, then go into the Sunrise Temple, then to the top right section inside there. You will find a gold pipe that you now should be able to use, which takes you to an optional giant Goomba boss. After you beat that fight, you'll snag yourself your first gold prism. This can be used to unlock that hidden fifth skill tree for one of your characters. Number 9. If you want to know the exact distance you can team jump before initiating it, just get near an ally and wait a moment. That'll show you a yellow circle indicator of how far you can fly. However, you can somewhat extend that distance you can travel if you carefully land yourself on a section of cover that is on the edge of that radius. Landing on an enemy works too, which might let you go that little extra nugget further which could make all the difference. Number 10. Applying the splash effect to your attacks will make enemies fly backwards, which is another great way to take advantage of that extra out-of-bounds damage. Number 11. Here's one of the best ways to move your entire team the furthest. Whoever is the farthest back, move them up to their maximum distance. Then the character that is the most up front, move them backwards into their movement zone. Team jump them as far as they can travel to. 
then you can move that character that was already the furthest forward just like normal. But now you also have newly placed allies to team jump off of, getting them even further forward than they initially could. This is a mission type where I just needed to reach that exit zone to win, and that just happened. <laughs> Number 12. The ooze effect will apply a damaging poison to anyone that gets crop dusted in its effect. Then they will take a little extra damage each time their turn starts. Number 13. To improve your sparks, they require a higher amount of star bits each time you upgrade their level. It takes 550 star bits just to go from level 4 to 5 for example. However, the star potions you'll be finding give a flat, instant level up regardless of how high their level already is. So I suggest sitting on those star potions, not literally, till later on in the game to use them for your higher rank sparks. Number 14. The frostbite effect will freeze enemies in place for a turn. Useful for enemy types that annoyingly charge at you after being attacked. And number 15. On the map screen, the quest log has a useful extra feature in it. In here, you can easily replay battles you have already done to also include any of the main boss fights. That's pretty useful if you're trying to grind some extra coins and star bits without having to wander around looking for battles. And for the sassy peoples who stuck around this long, a bonus tip for you. Before you purchase anything that costs planetary coins, save up and make sure you get the area's key from the shop first. These are used to open the secret zones on each planet, which are unique challenges with really good rewards. This one here on the third planet gives you the Wild Claw Master Spark, and that lets you summon pretty much an entire extra party member to fight on your side. And with that, those were the main tips I had for you today. But let me know down in the comments what kind of other useful tricks you figure out, and I might just highlight them if they're solid. Also, if you want to see a full-length battle against that giant Goomba from earlier, head over to my side channel, Bonus Boomstick. And if you haven't already seen it, here on the main channel, I have a big battle guide up for Sparks of Hope as well which breaks down every single character class, their best skill tree upgrades, and has some extra gameplay tips in there. Thanks for checking all that out and for sticking around to the very end. I'm Alex, and I'll probably see you pretty soon in the next one.